Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is Christmas. It is December 25th, 2016, and I'm all alone. Uh, I sold something the other day, uh, ubiquity networking equipment, and I was going to send it out the other day and I missed a mailman. So my plan was to mail it tomorrow, Monday, the 26th of December. And uh, our apartment office is closed. And so I would have to catch the mailman and that didn't work very well the other day. So it came to me, actually my ex-wife said, why don't you do that? And that's uh, create a priority package and that way they will come to right to the apartment and pick it up, then they'll pick up whatever else there is. So I just went and I there was something I was supposed to send to <laughs> back in January to a lady and uh, so I just, i has been sitting here and I just didn't get around to it. So I created a, I went and printed up, uh, paid for a priority envelope, seven dollars, six fifty or something like that, to send it. I wouldn't normally have sent it priority, but that was to get the post office to come tomorrow. And I printed it, paid it, paid for the label, and then I went to tell the post office to make a pickup at my apartment on Monday. And the post office, of course, is closed on the 26th because the 25th was a holiday. Actually, a long time ago, I actually worked for about two or three months for the post office. I should have known that, but it was a long, long time ago. I actually quit the post office. And the post office said, the people I was dealing you know, you're going to be sorry you quit the post office. This is a career civil service appointment. And I said, no, I won't be sorry. You think this was their attempt to get back at me? Anyway, what I'm, this is going to be, I said I was going to make videos or put clips in. I thought about making videos and then at the end of the video would be a story, a true story something, you know, and I've had a bunch of you say, yeah, you know, that'd be nice. That way also I could get you to watch my crappy video and then you'd, because you'd want to hear that story. So anyway, this is going to be a story. I went to St. Vent, well, I went to Catholic schools, grade school and high school. I went to Holy Name. Well, I went to What's the name of, can't remember now, the kindergarten, Horseman Kindergarten, was that it? Public school. And then I went to Holy Name grade school for the first grade, the second grade, the second grade, the third grade, and the fourth grade. I'm not stuttering, I went to the second grade twice. I had to take the second grade over again. My grandmother, my mother's mother lived with us for a while. I actually, she had complete heart block. And it was a miracle that when my mother was a little girl, they didn't expect her mother uh, to survive. Well, not only did she survive and raise up Betty, my mother, I called my father Jim and I called my mother Betty. I never called them mom and dad or father and mother. I don't know why, but I called my mother's mother mom. She spent about two years, I think it was, living with us. And uh, she had arthritis really bad uh, and this complete heart block. Uh, once a year, for a number of years, a 
doctor from General Hospital, this is in Kansas City, Missouri, General Hospital later became Truman Medical Center, uh, he would come by and pick her up and take her to the hospital and tell her case and show her case or whatever to doctors who were in training, saying, here is a lady who has complete heart block. Uh, mom, Hallie Stallsworth, uh, was addicted to phenobarbital and if she had had it there, she would take more than than she was supposed to take. So I I'm not sure exactly. I know she lived with her. We lived I think during my two years of going to the second grade, maybe the first grade also. She lived with us. Um, so at that age, my job was she had a bell beside her bed and. When she wanted her, thought it was time for medication, she would ring the bell, and if it was time, I would get her medication and, you know, give it to her. Um, but during the, well, yeah, well, she would have been there during the first grade because that I went, I went to the public school, horseman kindergarten, then we moved, and then I went to Holy Name or. Uh, Is that it? Man, my command mind is going. Uh, and I can remember I went to school for the first day and some boys chased me home from school. And mom went outside and uh, had me break a switch off the tree or whatever and give it to her so she could strip the, leg, the leaves off. And then she told me I was going to have to fight those boys. And uh, they were in kind of shock. And she took that switch and hit me on the legs a few times. And I don't remember fighting them, but I never had any... After that, we were all friends. And it was, you know, they, probably, they probably didn't want to deal with my grandmother. Uh, so she was with us then, too. Um, and I can remember, I'm not sure how, well, there's some pictures around here someplace, so I could figure out how old I was because of the date. There's a picture of me at her, at her grave site. I can remember when uh, she went to the hospital like a number of times. I can remember my mother driving her to the hospital, you know, or, you know, leaving. I was in bed. And uh, mom, grandma, you know, said, you know, goodbye and left. And then she died, you know, at the hospital. So, uh, so I went to Holy Name grade school. And then I went to, uh, for the fourth and the fifth grade and the, no, for the fifth grade, I went to St. Vincent's, and the sixth and seventh grade at that time were combined in the Catholic schools in that parish. And I was one of the last, right after that, the public school, you know, the public school system or whatever that regulated, told the Catholic schools, no, you can't combine the sixth and seventh grade. I think the reason the Catholic schools combined the the year was because they didn't have junior high schools. When a Catholic school was... There's a movie, Heaven Help Us. Heaven Help Us, that's it. Uh, you might watch that movie if you want to get an idea about Catholic school, although that's about a high school. Uh, also, you might watch uh, St. Ralph. There's probably some other movies too, but so I went for the fifth grade to St. Vincent's de Paul Church. Now that parish, my father and his brothers, his seven brothers and his three sisters 
that's where they grew up. That's where his father died and had his funeral. His father's funeral was at St. Vincent's. I, my father and mother got married at St. Vincent's. I got baptized at St. Vincent's. Um, so that church was, you know. Uh, so they, uh, the school there, the grade school has set up a wall or something or other with items. So I'm sending, I was supposed to do this last year or the beginning of this year. So I was going to send them some stuff. So I'm finally getting around to sending it to them. My father graduated from grade school and had, and he never went to high school, by the way. My father graduated in 1927. This is his high school or his uh, grade school class. And this is up. Where am I? What, what, uh, this is my father, James Joseph Howard, Jr. Now up here, uh, up, 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 okay, right here, that's uh, right here. That's my father's, of course they were all, you know, and they were large families. My dad's family, seven Seven and three sisters. I think that was it. And I don't know how many of the uh, Hubers there were, but they were a bunch. Large Catholic families. So, Huber there, my father and Oscar Huber, the reason my father didn't grad go to high school or graduate from high school was they both went to the seminary, Conception Seminary in Missouri, to be Catholic priest. And my father was there a while, and he didn't want to be a Catholic priest. He wanted to go home, and he was writing home, telling his father and mother, I want to come home. I don't want to be a priest. And they said, no, you are the one. You're the one that's going to be the priest in the family. So he ran away, he came, showed up dirty at the door or whatever, and uh, he didn't have to be go to the seminary, but he didn't go to Catholic high school, um, or go to any high school. So this is his uh, diploma, which I'm sending for the, that's his diploma, 1927, signed by the rector and by the uh, sister. So I graduated from St. Vincent's grade school. And I graduated in 1955. And if you notice, the pastor is Oscar Huber. That is the boy who went with my father to Conception Seminary. He became a Catholic priest and became, for a while, the, the, the pastor there. And then it's signed by the principal, Sister Mary Robert James. Now, during the time that um, Oscar Huber was pastor there, and when I was going to school there, uh, you could go to the cap school cafeteria to have lunch, or if you were if your home was within walking distance, you could go home for lunch. That was it. You had to either go home or you had to go to the cafeteria. But 
I didn't want to go to the cafeteria. I think I went to the cafeteria a few times because I remember what it looked like. I remember also being there and I was so used to feeding our dog or whatever that I, there was a few times that I was in the cafeteria and I would, th uh, I would throw something on the floor for the dog to eat and then I'd realize, oh, there's no dog here. I can also remember too, because my mother was not Catholic. She was, would have been, well, she didn't, but she'd have been a Baptist. Uh, my mother's father had been a member, might have still been a member, of the, I doubt it, but he was, he was a member of the Klan, the KKK, and he would not attend uh, the, the marriage of his only daughter because she was marrying a papist, a Catholic. So um, I can remember occasionally I must have been in that cafeteria because uh, I would open up my lunch sack and there would it would be Friday and there would be a bologna sandwich or something and the other kids were like, you're going to go to hell, you know. So when I sometimes, well, that, that's what got when I, oh, wait a minute, I would just not take the bologna sandwich out of the uh, sack. But anyway, I stopped going to the cafeteria and I started going across the street. I should have pulled up a map of that. But uh, this is the altar in now, of course, you know. This is the church, which looks identical to when I, you know. The school was right over here, which I, last picture I saw looks identical to when I was, but here's the church, but, uh, one block down and across the street on the corner was a drugstore. So I went over there and uh, I would have a malt, chocolate malt, and a hot dog. Maybe I had two, I can't remember, but I have, have and I would sit, I would sit at the counter and I would have that. And then I did that for a long time. I'm not sure if I did it for more than, if I did it for two years. It, did, it was a regular. That's where I went to have my lunch. Both my parents worked. Um, and I was sitting there, and then I was looking out the big window, and then I saw the principal, Sister Mary Robert James, coming. And she was in a habit. They wore habits back then. The thing with a crazy hat that and the beads, you know, hang, hung down, and she was coming, and her hat was flapping, and the beads were swinging, and she was coming for me, and I knew it. And she came in, and she grabbed me by the ear, and drug me up here into the church, and Father Huber was there, and she told Father Huber what I had been doing that I had not been going home and I had not been going to the cafeteria and he threw me into the wall. He didn't hurt me. He didn't, there was no bruises on me or anything like that. But he slammed me into the wall of the church and told me to behave or something like that. Years later, I was, you know, I was thinking, you know, I didn't think about it at the time, but I was thinking later when I was an adult, hey, he, he, he was a school, you know, he went to school with my father. He knew my father. They went to the seminary together. Why would he push me into the wall? So, uh, probably the name Father Oscar Huber is not going to ring a bell with you, but you may have watched one of my videos before where I mentioned him. Uh, I didn't know it, by the way, I was also married, you know, I told you I was, my parents were married in this church. My father was baptized in the church. His brothers and sisters were baptized in the church. Uh, uh, my parents were married there. I was married there. Uh, went to grade school there. Um, but Father Hubert didn't, remain at St. Vincent's, he was sent, which I did not know at the time until later, 
he was sent to Dallas, Texas. And when John F. Kennedy By the way, if you are a graduate of, uh, or you attended St. Vincent's grade school there, uh, find their page and uh, they have a website. Let's see what the website looks like here. Open a new window here. Um, so he was sent when John F. Kennedy was assassinated President of the United States assassinated in Dallas when Kennedy was shot he was taken to Park Lane Hospital and they called for a Catholic priest to come and give the last rites and Father Huber showed up and went in and the president was dead. Nobody knew that the president was, you know, the, the general public, nobody knew. We were, we were all waiting. I was watching TV. Everybody else, everybody was. And we're listening to the radio, depending where you were. And everybody was waiting. He went in and he had to pull the sheet back and he performed the last rites on the president. And they went outside in the news media to ask him, how is President Kennedy? And he said that President Kennedy was dead, that he had given him had to pull the sheet back and he'd given him the last rites. So that's a little bit of history and a little bit of a little bit of a story. Um, St. Vincent's Church, I think it was actually sold, you know, sold. Well, I know it had to be because it's not it's not Roman Catholic. Well, I guess it's still Roman Catholic. They would say, especially they would say, uh, what's the name of that French cardinal or whatever that broke with the Vatican over changes that were made and. So he got a following, and there are, there is uh, the segment that follows him. They actually, this church is actually theirs. They would say they are the true one, holy apostolic church. Uh, the Vatican has excommunicated them, and uh, but I mean. They're, they're arguing over whether you know, Latin should be used in the Mass. They're arguing over whether the priest uh, faces the altar or whether he faces the parishioner. They're arguing over points like that, which they seem to think is, you know, important, but uh, doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to God. Uh, but, so that's my little story. Let me know if you like it. Well, you can just thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh, so, Tuesday, Monday's a holiday. Post office is taking it off. And so Tuesday, I'm going to be able to ship out, now ship this out, which <laughs> they probably forgot about. They're going to put this kind of stuff on the wall, whatever. So on the back is uh, a list of list of the students. You know something, wait a minute, where are the girls? I... I should have asked, could it? Well, I could ask some of the people, you know. Did they just do a separate photo shoot? The boys? And then the girls, or was, uh, I don't know, never thought of that. Uh, list of the students, Frank Daly, second row, 
the Dailies also. My father was friends with the Dailies and with the uh, Hubers. They were a large family. And I think it's Frank Daly. And I looked it up, I, or tried to look it up. I couldn't find it. Maybe anybody in Chicago, maybe. I can remember my father and mother, you know, reading the Kansas City Times in the morning and the Kansas City Star in the evening. And I think it was uh, one of the obituaries. They read that and then they'd be, oh, there's so-and-so who, you know, who, who died or whatever. But my father and mother also read a nationally publicized newspaper column by Frank Daly. And uh, I tried to find it out of Chicago, I believe. And uh, I tried to look up, couldn't find any information. If, if, yep, I'm curious, you know, how long did Frank, if you, so if you happen to be a, somebody who's a longtime Chicago person, or you could be someplace else and maybe you followed his column or something. I'd be interested. Uh, also on here, by the way, I see uh, Robert Pendergast. And that was a large family. And the Pendergast uh, was, what would you call a machine? He was, he ran Kansas City, Jackson County area. I don't think he was ever elected to any political office. He, I'm not sure how he got in that position, but he ran, he ran everything. The courthouse, the city hall, all those buildings were built uh, because of him. And I'm not sure exactly how it worked, whether they used his cement or whether they used uh, Hit, but I do know because I knew several people who, and I, I you know I read about that and heard about that that if you wanted a job, you know you went to him, and he would give you his card if you signed it with a certain color, a, c a certain color pen or something, he would tell you to go to the police department or go to the uh, fire department or go to the city hall or whatever and with the card, and the person there if they saw it was that had signed it correctly, you'd get the job. I knew a guy who who was proud that he got a job and uh, that way he told me, you know, that he went to Pendergast and got a you know, job as a police officer, worked his entire life as a police officer and retired. Well, he retired and then he was director of security at General Hospital and later he was director of security at Research Medical Center, and that's when he was telling me that, you know, he got that, and he was telling me too, which was kind of unusual, he was telling me that he owed, you know, Pendergast, that he understood, you know, when Pendergast gave him that job, he owed, Pender, and he owed Pendergast, and, and uh, when somebody does something for you, you, you know, you have to pay him back, and you have to, whatever, and, and I, I thought, uh, is he telling me that I'm indebted to him? And which was kind of funny because I didn't apply for the job of security officer that he was hiring me. I, uh, years before they had an opening for a part-time guy, I was working hospital security, and they had an opening for a part-time guy while they were doing some construction who would be in a parking lot in a shack or whatever, just watching the parking lot. And it was ex something I could have done and still continue to work at Trinity Lutheran Hospital as a security officer. So I went and applied. So that was it. I didn't get, well, the reason I didn't get hired, that's a story. I'll tell you that story sometime. <laughs> the reason I didn't get hired. I should tell you that now. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I didn't get hired. And so years later, uh, 
I don't know why, how I knew, but he was calling me, Bill Gilmer. Uh, he was calling me on my phone and I wasn't answering. I had a telephone answering machine and I wasn't answering. I didn't want to, I, he told me, I guess, on the, on the, when the phone rang, I knew who it was. I didn't want to talk to him. And so then he called the chief of police at uh, Raymore Chief of Police, Lee Coleman, who was a retired Kansas City, Missouri police officer. And so when I went in to do my uh, patrol duties for Raymore PD, uh, Lee, who was a really nice guy, a retired sergeant from the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, said, Jim, do me a favor. Bill Gilmer's trying to get hold of you. He wants to give you a job. And and I said, I don't want it. I don't want a job for him. I don't want to work there. And he said, well, do me a favor. You know, he's, we want a police department together. Do me a favor and, and talk to him. So, so then I talked to him for Lee. And he told me, then Bill Gilmer told me, Jim, I, you just got to come to work for me. You got to come to work at Research Medical Center as a security officer. You just got to come to work for me. And I think he told me then, well, it was either then or then when he was later having this, con, you know, like my first week or whatever. And he, he took me to lunch then in the, uh, had a little restaurant there in that place. And uh, he told me, well, there's this lady who uh, is a head nurse here and she wants me to hire her husband and her husband has pretty good credentials but I don't want her I don't want I don't want to hire the some husband of a head nur of a nurse here any nurse whether she's a head nurse or not later that nurse went on to be in charge of the uh, admitting department but she, right then she was head I guess head nurse and uh, he said so if I gotta hire somebody who's got better credentials and has credentials that I can say, well, I had to hire this guy, so please come to work for me. So, like an idiot, I went to uh, I went to work for him, and uh, later on, a bunch of guys were hired, you know, later on, and then while I was working, well, it would have been during that first five years, I think. No, I'm, I went down for a year later. I don't know. Anyway, I think it was during that first five years that I was working there at the main hospital research medical center. Uh, Bill Gilmer ended up hiring in the guy that he didn't want to hire. And uh, I guess by that time, her, the uh, guy's wife was head of the volunteers. Um, no, that was it. It wasn't admitting department. I was thinking of another lady at another hospital, Trinity. No, this uh, she was head of the volunteers and went from being head nurse to in charge in charge of the director of the volunteers. And so her husband was hired hired in. And uh, actually, he was an SOB. Uh, I didn't, you know, I wasn't into, I mean, I just went and did my job. Every place I worked, I went in and did my job. If somebody else wouldn't do their job, I would do their job. I don't, you know, I went there to work and did my job, but I did have, I would, we would switch every two hours, so you might, and I think he actually worked another different shift, I believe. No, maybe, I can't remember, but guy was an SOB. So, I think that's it. My end of the story, but you might remind me about the part that I was not, that I didn't want to go into. Or, well, if you have a question, Remind me, and I've got to remember that I told you this story, so I don't fucking tell you this story again. 
Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And it's only 7 p.m. here, so I, I can still wish you a Merry Christmas or a Happy Holiday or Happy Festivus or Happy Hanukkah. And I don't know what any of the other things that they have in Jewish as, happy, as Hanukkah. I don't know. Not sure about the rest. Whatever. Happy holiday. That'll cover it. Thank you very much.